Hello everybody and welcome back to another review here on the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out Superman Annual 2023 by Joshua Williamson, Mahmoud Asra, Edwin Galman, Caitlin Yarsky, Max Raynor and Jack Herbert. This year's annual for Superman focuses on the entire Daily Planet bullpen, which is now being run by the new editor-in-chief Lois Lane, who took over from Perry White after his heart attack. Lois is eager to track down the leads on the myriad of stories that have sprung up in Metropolis as of late, like Lex Luthor apparently being a hero in his youth, the two new supervillains, Dr. Farm and Mr. Graf that Superman has been facing, a mysterious new female cowboy named Marilyn Moonlight who's helped keeping the city safe at night, the new police chief, Chief Kakoa, and much more. Williamson uses this opportunity to reintroduce us to the planet's top reporters, bringing in old veterans like Ron Troop and Steve Lombard and Cat Grant, and adding in some of the newer creations like Trish Q and Miko Ogawa, giving each a meaty story to follow. Since Lois doesn't like doing things the normal way though, she assigns each reporter a story they wouldn't usually report on, and the book follows these stories as Superman battles Toy Man as the background setting. First we see Lisa Lombard, Steve Lombard's sister, and Jimmy Olsen tackling Supercorp, which doesn't really cover any new ground or stuff we didn't really already know, but it's a great recap on the company and what it is and how it came to be in Superman's possession and is great for new readers. Next up is Lois deciding to interview Livewire at Strikers Island, which sees her teaming with the villain against Robinson Good, the Red Cloud, who still holds a grudge against Lois for outing her as a spy for the Invisible Mafia and winning an award for it. This is a continuation of Williamson rehabbing Livewire as a more heroic character, and I like that the pairing of Lois and Leslie get along so well, since both are very fiery go-getter people, and it culminates in a real neat reveal that Livewire has become the Daily Planet's new guest columnist, playing to Leslie's strengths as someone who craves fame and wants a platform to be heard on. Next we see Cat Grant going on a ride along with the new Chief of Police Kakoa, who for a new character we really have barely seen anything of and we haven't really gotten much about him. We do learn in this issue that he's very by the book and he's much like Jim Gordon in that way and the story leads to Cat getting an exclusive with Marilyn Moonlight, actually somewhat bonding with the hero who we learn was hurt by Metropolis in a very personal way, a very personal way that Cat can relate to since Williamson taps into some real old school Superman stories from the 90s which saw Cat's son die at the hands of Toy Man. Cat's character throughout the issue was fantastic and she's constantly watching this fight between Superman and the man that killed her son, which distracts her a lot from her work but it also ends up being the thing that bridges the gap in her work with Marilyn and gives her some equal footing with the vigilante and allows her to get that exclusive. It's a fantastic use of a character's established history being used to help build out something new for them and those around them. Lois Meemol has been diving into Lex Luthor's past in Metropolis and has dug up a real big story, which is that Lex was indeed a hero in the past, but all stories of him and his heroics were buried by Perry White. Perry doesn't get much to do this issue except the big reveal that he's running for mayor now. And now with this story of him hiding Lex's past and maybe having some prior deals with Lex in place, it puts him at odds with Lois and Clark, so I can't wait for Williamson to dive into that drama and how it changes their relationship. At this point I want to also commend Mamad Asra, Edwin Galman, Caitlin Yarsky, Max Raynor and Jack Herbert, all of the artists on this annual, each who took a story and really made it their own, giving Metropolis a really diverse yet very consistent look as they explored all the different nooks and crannies of the city of tomorrow. Williamson also saves the biggest reveal for the final pages, which reveals that Lobo has been captured by Dr. Farm and Mr. Graft, who extracts some of his blood to confirm something they seemingly already knew, which is that Lobo's DNA is being tracked by someone, and that someone is goddamn Brainiac, who finally makes his presence known after being revealed in that first issue of the Williamson Superman run, and here we find out that this entire issue has been kind of him reviewing data scans from Earth seemingly. Not only that, it's revealed that he has a bottled city of Zarnia, Lobo's homeworld, and he intends on using the bloodthirsty Zarnians to help find something on Earth which could, may or may not, bring back his own race. Quite interesting to note that the Zarnians should not be alive as Lobo is always chanting on about how he's the last son of Zarnia, very much like how Superman is the last son of Krypton. 
is a total swerve from where I thought Williamson was going to take the Brainiac story, but I'm very much excited for a very heavily implied Zarnian invasion of Earth and more Brainiac back as a Superman villain, and I like the inclusion that he seemingly has some sort of doomsday dogs with him, or dogs that are imbued with the doomsday virus or something. It's all very intriguing and I'm looking forward to what Williamson is going to do with these characters. Joshua Williamson and his team of talented artists make a meal out of this year's Superman annual, giving some much needed focus to the side characters of Superman's story, building out Metropolis as its own character with its own interesting and unique stories within it, away from Superman, finishing up with a big reveal and hint at the next big Superman event. I'm going to give this annual a much deserved 10 out of 10, it's a fantastic piece to catch up everyone on what Superman has been up to and what Williamson is building towards in his ongoing series for the character.